Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink and finally getting to show you guys these cards I made with the Lawn Fawn Thanks a Bushel stamp set that I showed in a fairly recent haul video. So I pulled this set out the other day and I had stamped it actually multiple times onto some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I stamped the images with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink and I did all the coloring on for all the other ones ahead of time and then saved this last one to show you guys. I'd already posted pictures of it on social media and whatnot. And I had people asking, you know, what colors I used and all that. So, of course, I'm going to share that with you guys here. So to start off with, I did um, two red apples in this basket. And I used R29, R24, and R02, just working from darkest to lightest. And as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have a picture of all the colors listed because it's just, it's still a pain for me to try and add them onto my videos. I'm still struggling with figuring out all of the ins and outs of using this program. And yeah, fun times. So I've sped this up just a little bit. This is only sped up um, about 50% or whatever, but I just colored everything in. And like I said, I used the Nina Solar White 80 pound for this. I will either use the 80 pound or the 110 pound of this brand. It just kind of depends on my mood with the 80 pound because it's lighter, um, like a thinner cardstock. You have to be a little bit more careful about images bleeding and whatnot because there's just not as much paper to absorb, which is also a good thing because you're not using up as much marker ink. So it's personal preference. You kind of have to experiment with different types of cardstock to find your groove with this specific brand, with the Nina brand. As far as I'm aware, the only ones that really work well with Copix are these classic Crest Solar White cardstocks. Just an FYI, because they do make quite a few different brands are different types of white cardstock. And some of it is a lot cheaper, but I've heard not good things. Um, as far as I'm aware, I haven't heard of anyone having success with anything other than these Solar White cardstocks. So I just thought I would mention that. Um, because yeah, I always link to all the supplies I use, you know, the inks I use, the cardstock and that when I'm coloring. I've just been getting a lot of questions lately, I think because of like new subscribers, which hello and welcome. And yeah, trying to include all these little tidbits of info in here. So I colored all of my apples using all the different colors I had planned. And you'll see at the end, all the other cards I did with like the same colors, just I did kind of different combos of what apples I put in the little baskets. And once I was done all the coloring, I grabbed the coordinating die set that I got, so the Thanks a Bushel dies, and I lined them up over my images and then taped them down with some micropore tape so these don't move. And you can see I had stamped the individual. There's two little individual apples, one with a bite out of it and one just a solid apple. And I'd stamped those multiple times onto this cardstock and had already colored and cut those out ahead of time. And then I'm gonna run these through my die cut machine all at once. So I've got them all die cut. And then while I've got my die cut machine out, I'm gonna die cut everything else. And that was kind of one of the nice things about making, I did a basic set of cards and making the other ones ahead of time, I already had a system in place. So it was just fun how nice and smoothly this process went along. So I could film all this at once. Um, you guys know, I always say I fly by the seat of my pants with everything. I just, I don't really have time to plan ahead, anything like that. But with this, I basically planned ahead by making the other cards. So I was able to, die cut everything in one step, just do everything all at once. So I die cut some craft card stock with one of Simon Says Stamp basic rectangle dies. I used the largest basic rectangle dies with the Lawn Fawn perfectly plaid fall paper that I showed in the same haul video that I love, love this paper. That was also one of the reasons I decided to make several cards because I wanted to use several of the different papers. And then I used one of my favorite things, their stitched mini scallop rectangle stack dies, the largest one, and their poppy red cardstock and die cut that as well. It layered perfectly with this um, basic rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp. So I wrapped um, some, just some twine, this May Arts twine I've shown in other videos. It's been a while since I've used it. That was the last little bit I had from my one little bundle though. So I wrapped that around the craft cardstock and tied that in a bow and I'd use my tweezers to hold it in place. And then I die cut two pieces of blue raspberry cardstock from MFT with one of the extra sentiment banners dies from Lawn Fawn. It just fit that thanks a bushel sentiment perfectly. So I stamped that with the same um, intense black ink and then I trimmed down some foam tape and popped that on the back of this little um, banner here and adhered that into place. 
And then the actual basket of apples, I'm just gonna adhere flat to the craft card stock with my Tombow Mono Multi. And then the one solid apple, I'm gonna pop that up with the foam tape as well, just for a little extra dimension. And then I put a bunch of foam tape on the back of this, um, just to make it adhere better because there was all that, um, there'd be all the lumpiness basically from the twine. So adhering it with foam tape just eliminates um, having to deal with that. And then more mono multi on the back of this to adhere it in place. I've been talking a lot about mono multi lately. It's just been on my desk and I reach for it all the time. But I love that it gives you like just a few, like a couple seconds, basically a wiggle room to kind of line up your whatever you're adhering. And I'm using it here again. It just gives you that time to move things around, get it lined up. And then once it sets, you're done. Like you cannot move it around anymore. And if you try to pull it up, you're going to tear your cardstock. So I adhered the um, card front to a white cardstock um, card base, which was cut to four and a quarter by 11. I squirted it at five and a half. So it's a top folding A2 sized card, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I had this leftover pattern paper from die cutting the front. So I just trimmed that down and adhered it to the inside of the card. And then that second banner that I had die cut, I stamped another sentiment from this set, um, the teacher one with the little exclamation point, which is separate. So you can choose whether or not you want to use it. And I decided to use it. So I stamped that on that banner and then adhered that over the pattern paper and then just adhered the remaining little apple. And technically I was done with my cards here. I was just going to leave them at this. I thought, you know, they're super cute as they were the twine embellishment and the foam tape and all that. But you guys know me, I had to add something else to it. So I had um, five cards all together that I had made. And I had done these enamel dots in a previous video. And at the end of this video, I'll have a link to them um, to show how I made them. But they're just made with those Nouveau crystal drops. And I had done a bunch with, was this Caribbean Ocean? Yes, Caribbean Ocean. And it went so well with the aqua and the pattern paper. And on the banner there, I thought that would just kind of finalize the little um, cards here. So I pulled off all those enamel dots I'd made off my um, nonstick craft sheet and set them where I wanted them on the cards. And then I'm just going to use my multi-medium matte adhesive to adhere these in place. And you could have done one of two things. You can either, you know, make the enamel dots ahead of time like I show in that other video, or I could have just squeezed the Crystal Nouveau like right onto these cards. Um, either way works. It's up to personal preference. Um, honestly, more often than not, I like just applying it directly to the cardstock. When I'm doing a bunch like this though, it's a bit of a pain because then they all have to sit separately and, you know, and dry and make sure you don't smear it, anything like that. Um, so yeah, it just kind of depends. This just worked because I had all these like, you know, sitting in that package and didn't know what I was going to do with them. So I used a bunch of them up. So I felt good about that. <laughs> so four of the cards I did with the teacher sentiments because I thought those will come in handy um, with the kids being back in school. And then one of them, I just added the friend sentiment here for always making me smile. I just thought that was just really cute. And that finished off all these cards. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post with the pictures, the Copa colors, all that info. There will be links to all the supplies used. I'll have them linked um, to Simon Says Stamp. You can also get these sets through Scrap and Stamp Canada. That's where I got mine from. So I'll have all that info for you guys. And then at the end here, I will have links to the video I did showing how I made the enamel dots as well as to the haul video when I got all these goodies. So you can click on those if you want to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, and commenting on my videos, and I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.